soon. Uh, so, yeah. All right. Well, here we go. Ready to start things off on Inferno. This was the pick of flip side, so they will be starting on the T side. See what they can get done. Berg checking towards middle with that USB. Now looking towards alternate. A lot of times that can just be a death trap. It could be so hard to see. Nice flash. That allows Bond to get up towards top of Banana, but those CT players had already fallen back. Benji pushing through on the halls here. So property getting pretty aggressive. Berg going to go down, this time without support. I mean, I thought Benji was there. They'd do it together. Benji does get the assist, and oh my gosh, property. Who is this person? Who is Moffalitten? I have no I feel like idea. I'm getting trapped into saying profane Swedish words. Maybe, dude. Maybe. I know I've said some pretty crappy Portuguese words on streams at times. That was a good moment for you, Dust. <laughs> As Blade going to try to clutch this thing, uh, one versus four at the back. A triple does find one, but will go down. But the bomb plant comes in, so it's going to open up the option for Flipside Tactics to get that third round AK by and, and try to make something happen a little bit earlier in the half than uh, would have been possible without it. So uh, we'll see how that comes to effect, but a good round for property to, to close that thing out and uh, and get off to the 1-0 start from the CT side. That's where you want to be. Oh, that's very, very nice property showing, of course. I mean, these guys are insane aimers. They're extremely talented and a very nice kill there. I'm just going to say Moff. I'm going to go with Moff until we, we figure out how to pronounce that correctly or figure out who that is. Uh, very nice quick 2K peeking out at the top of Banana and now... We've got three submachine guns, all different. P90 ump and an MP7 and the A4s for Kaboom and Berg. Flipside with just yeah, P250s, but they will be buying up in the third. Yeah, and just pretty spread out here. They do have uh, that one P250 there from Blade, just kind of working over towards Banana World. It's still T-stairs. The rest just trying to work some type of apartments control. But they do have the aggressive push here from Night9 and Moff Litten or whatever. And they are going to get the kills there in the apartments. And they're just cleaning house at this point. Well, that it left alone and he will be discovered as well. So Flaws are there for property. But to be expected as Flipside Tactics had nothing invested in that. They're all saving up for this moment here where the AKs will come into play. And this is where we'll get a little bit of a better idea of how this, uh, this half might go. Yeah. And by the way, Knight is Berg. It is very hard not to just read Knight all many times, oh. but just so you know, in case that name rings a bell for you. I know you generally yeah, focus on North American Counter-Strike, but... Hey, now. Don't pigeonhole me, <laughs> Joey. Yo, hey, I'm sorry. What's wrong with pigeons, huh? I just followed the good European teams. Oh, wow. I was just kidding. That was uncalled for. Yeah, I mean, I know Flipside actually pretty well. Uh... But yeah, you're right. I, I'm not too familiar with property. I'm glad you told me that it was Berg. I recognize the name Berg, but I never would have looked it up. I just would have went with Night Nine all the way through and through. Yeah, so. he's, he's actually been playing pretty well for the team. He was a player that was kind of in and out of the roster, kind of underperforming, stuck as the sixth man, and, and he certainly has his games. I would say he's maybe a little right. bit inconsistent. Like sometimes he's the only <laughs> person carrying this team, and then other times he's well, like. To be fair, I feel like property has just been the revolving door of Swedish players as they go in and out of the the top level scene. Uh, like I mean, th didn't they have fair. Schneider for a short time who left, and now yeah. Dignitas, and then they had Devil Walk and stuff for a short time before he left and came to America. Uh, so or Canada rather. So yeah, it's just been kind of yeah, kind of we, weird we over consider there. that America over here in America, anyways. Oh wow, grenade going off with the Grand Prix. We'll find the headshot onto Markelov, so taking him down. And you know the property, right? Like they come into this first rifle round, they're confident enough to keep these submachine guns online, and they're actually doing quite a bit of damage. Have found that first kill. That nade is gonna hurt. That slows down Davkost and brings him to 33 HP. Bomb going towards A Blade, trying to do what he can. Over in the B side, he will fall. Kaboom in library. Berg from pit and Kaboom again. Four people standing at the end of this round for property. They've got AKs in their hands. That's an incredible way to start up the CT side. They yeah, have I mean, so a... much money not having to buy in this round. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like holding on to those SMGs and just trying to put them to work. And they do. I mean, and they collect three AKs for their troubles uh, off of that. They, I think they only lost one player that round. Uh, so only one rebuy having to come in there from Robin. And uh, so flip side tactics on their first rifle round being denied. So they'll just have to be uh, on the P250s here this time. No nades, no anything. So just going to see to run out and just try to make something happen. But Robin getting aggressive here with the M4 as well as Berg. And they are so far getting the better end of the deal here. And this this should be quickly over uh, with property going up 4-0. to zero. 
Yeah, fantastic way. Oh, poor Bondic. He's like, oh, I just got him for maybe I can make something <laughs> happen. And then Moss like, nah, dog, I'm right here. You're not yeah, I wasn't sure who made that footstep. If it was, uh, who was that Bondic or Blade, the last one up? I don't know. Yeah, one of them. Um, I wasn't sure who made the footstep, whether it was Moth or it was that terrorist, but either way, it's Moth that hits that shot. He's up to five kills right now, found two on the pistol. It's 4-0. Flip side, though, on the T side, able to go ahead right. and pull out another buy round here. Yeah, definitely. And again, property going to get aggressive here on the banana, and they're just going to push through fire, but World Edit's going to be waiting for them there with the AK, so maybe property getting a little bit too overconfident there on that push. Pushing their own fire, taking team damage from it, and then getting blasted by World Edit. So that's a rough start here from Team Property compared to how the rest of the half had played out. Yeah, this will be the first time we'll have to see them. How are they going to play? They've got Benji over towards Banana, but he's pretty far back. He won't really be able to uh, alert his teammates fast enough since they are playing three towards A. That rotation won't come in time. So Benji at the top of Banana will have to be good for a couple kills here, at least to even it up. He'll need to go two for one. All right, as, uh, they are throwing a smoke from Archway, though, to kind of give Benji a moment where he won't have to dump his incendiary just yet. So to hold off a push, he can kind of burn a little bit more cloth for flip-fly tactics. This will also allow Kaboom to rotate back to B, maybe in time, once they realize nothing's going on at A, to help out Benji. But here do come the nades. They start executing. Benji will put down the fire, and Kaboom will make his way over. And Benji holds his corner. He might be able to surprise someone. Yeah, he's done a pretty good job so far. They're checking the other side. They will run by. Benji gets one. That flash from the CT blinded. Get out of it there. blinded everybody. It blinded Kaboom. Wow. He still hits the jump. It blinded Benji. It blinded the terrorist. But World Edit finally will find him over there towards Oranges. Maybe it was second Oranges. But three on two right now. Flip side getting the bomb down. Yeah, time was in the red there at 10 seconds. So right in the nick of time. Decent chance for a retake. Both of these guys do have kits. Blade and World Edit are somewhat low. Bondic is maybe the one to watch. And well, Blade is in a one kill spot with 7 HP. So pretty decent place for him to be. But will he get caught yeah. off guard? No, he will not. He gets Ooh. it. Yeah. Nice shot there. And now at Berg, just left alone here in a one versus three, trying to find some kills. 4K and caught out. for World yeah, Edit. Yeah, I mean, that was a big round from World Edit. Um, you know, I thought things might get a little bit dicey there after Benji was able to get a kill and get away, like, unscathed, but then Walled Edit still found him out there and put that towards uh, the quad kill, and that's his actual, you know, four kills of the game so far out of the five rounds play, but it couldn't have come at a better time to, you know, secure Flipside's tactics first round on the CT or T side, excuse me, and start limiting the CT economy a little bit here. If they can win this one in a row, then they could actually force the CTs to save. But at the same time, they have to worry about their own money possibly being reset here if they drop yeah, this is a one. big so, round. Yeah, very big round. Of course, CTs mainly thanks to the start. The fact that they kept uh, those three rifle or the three SMGs into the first rifle round and were still able to win it and then came out of that with AKs. That kept their money so good. Able to lose one and have a full buy and somehow Moth does not find that kill onto Bondic. So nearly there, but he misses out on it. He had even taken some damage. Uh, you can see the bullet holes on the wall. People spraying in from alternate. He had taken a little bit of damage from that. Only about nine, I think. Nice kill there to get that opening pick. So this is twice now where <clears throat> on rifle rounds property have had to start the round off. Basically a man down. Last time it did not work out so well for them. And uh, Blade, you know, kind of noted as one of the better tacticians, if not the best tactician from that CIS region. Uh, and so giving him a, a situation where he gets the call from a man up, that's going to be good news in the world. Edit finding that entry over at the B-bomb site here. He'll just start clearing out the site himself, and that bomb will start moving in with two players still mid to cut off rotations here. They're going to leave Bondic there while Blade rotates over. And, I mean, this round's probably flip side. That smoke was not very good. I thought it would perhaps be an opportunity for Robin to get a couple kills. Still a hard shot, and he doesn't hit the first one. Then they kind of flash to make up for the gap in the smoke. Everyone crosses into the site. And the terrorists are, are safe and sound over there in B. Robin, Kaboom, and Berg all saving right now. Oh, or are they? Bondic over towards the dark room with those... Man, in the dark room, those flip side stickers are very bright on the side of that AK. Right, I mean, you have two just holding out CT spawn. Everyone's exiting Banana, though. They might eventually find Berg here inside the pits. They might be able to get one of these M4s down, but 
definitely no chance. Uh, I mean, Kaboom and Robin certainly going to be able to hold on to theirs. And yeah, Berg will not get discovered. So they will have three rifles in play. And, and with uh, with dropping capabilities here from Kaboom, they will actually still get a full gun round out of this. Uh, so that was big to say those M4s would give him a shot here and not you know, avoid some type of save situation. Meanwhile, flip side, Tactics have dodged the bullet of their money being reset and have been able to build up some bank themselves. So this is starting to, to play out pretty good for flip side. And it's mostly just been World That is, if we're honest, he's been hitting some really key entries these last couple of rounds to put flip side on the board. Yeah, he's done very well for himself. Here comes the smoke over towards the, that porch side. That'll keep Berg guessing what exactly is happening. He's trying to smoke the top of middle. Moth is about to peek into a few. We'll get one. I mean, had a chance to possibly even to get, you know, one bullet, lineup, yeah. three kills, but just didn't have that angle. And then he, I think he overstayed his walk one a little bit too after he hit that first shot whenever they started chasing him. He just needed to get out of there, but held his ground, tried to find a second one and didn't. And that allowed Bondic and company to start swarming the site. Now they have the bomb down. They have a post plant three versus three. We do see team property still kind of committing to this for now. So we're trying to see if they can't find something here as they make their way up the lane. Benji leading the charge, does spot one in graveyard, but goes down, it's traded. But I mean, time's kind of ticked away here. And yeah, property will back off and just try to save these M4s now. Or AKs. Oh, he might not want to cross the long haul. Davkos still up top. He's going to take a lot of damage from that bomb. Or he'll die first. And there you go. There's some AKs. All the terrorists are dead. They've won the round. And it really won't do too much to their economy. World did it out there with almost 11k. We'll buy up into that op right now. And everyone else good for their own AKs and full set of grenades. And team property, you know, making do. Dropping some guns here since they saved two. And they'll also be good for another rifle round here into round eight. Starting to get worried uh, after those first four rounds for flip side, but they have since bounced back with three in a row. All right, so all that gonna have his first crack at the op here on the terrorist side, staging up half banana. It's looking for pushes, which is understandable because we have seen property at times get pretty aggressive early in the half. So he's just trying to see if he can catch someone pushing car now that he realizes no one's getting aggressive. He will begin to slowly work himself up and he will be pretty much by himself i mean blade is in the area the rest of the team just going to be working their normal apartments control setup so this is just kind of your your bread and butter default here for flip side tactics just working some control giving themselves some options and this is what they've done pretty much every round the, the key thing has been world edit getting those picks on the b side of the map in many scenarios uh, or getting some picks inside the apartments and they just respond appropriately to each. But now they get no picks and it's oh, forced to do an execute. Kaboom. He's very blind, both from flash and smoke. He's starting to push through this at the top of middle. He's kind of right behind these guys. As soon as this dissipates, there are still people further down mid. He'll take that shot. But now the terrorists responding oh to this, but goodness. not in a very good way. They will whiff one. I think that was Davkost whiffing. Kaboom is still good for two kills and uh, quite a bit of damage onto Blade who was running all the way back down T-Stairs to try to pick up that bomb. Started getting caught by Kaboom initially. And you've got a four on two. Benji in a very good spot. Sees the barrel of that op. But fire. Oh, oh my man. gosh. World edit on top of the wagon. Somehow able to get that. And then there's Robinberg to close it out. Time was so low at that point anyways. Right. I mean, flip side tactics just being kind of one of the slow methodical teams with Blade just trying to pick things out. The, the key thing that was different was this time around they didn't have that opening pick to work with. He couldn't really manipulate any rotations or anything like that. We just had their runs and type of execute and they just tried to, to work up the lane. And I mean, Kaboom was the big playmaker there hiding inside that smoke and finding those two kills at brackets as well as getting a lot of damage in. On one of those players towards banana now the op will come out from off he will look for the pick at mid well then it misses a shot so does he but have cost able to pick up Moff trying to get aggressive there in the window so again flip side back to a four, 5v4 situation and each time they found themselves in this spot they've been able to come up with the victory that was pretty uh pretty aggressive for Moff. He peeks down middle, already fairly aggressive. Both those oppers right. will miss, and he goes over towards alternate, trying to peek out that window. And flip side, we're working on the control over there. They had two people watching it, so he goes down immediately to the player on that. I don't even know what to really call it. Terrace porch, balcony out there in alternate. So that's a early man disadvantage for property. That'll give flip side a, a really good chance. They've already got two over towards B, two at A. Normally there's three people at the A, three people at the A side. So now you hit it full force. It is just so much easier to take when there's only two defenders. 
right? It's gonna a lot rides on Kaboom trying to put this op to work, holding this arch side, and we do have Berg playing. Uh, on the bounty, but let's put a smoke out that's going to block off uh, Markalov for now. So, I mean, they're killing a little bit of clock time with these nades, but now flip side will just start pressing in. Or that it has that op trained on bounty, he knows one player was there based on that smoke. So, we're just looking for him to, to drop back now as they do start pressing up the lane. Kaboom has that op, misses his shot. Will that it will not. And now this is flip side, just overwhelming the side at this point. Robin and, and Benji have a, a big task ahead of them, and, and they're so out of position at this point, they're just going to have to back off and save and concede a fourth round the flip side tactic. So, I mean, flip side, despite being around down, still seem really in control of this game so far. Yeah, so even though you're trying, you're hitting the A site, five versus two, you've only got two people towards A. Flip side are careful enough that they can get in and, and not lose anybody. It, it's still dangerous, right? There's still crossfires in the A site where two people can kill three, could kill four, and the round would just fall apart. But one, I don't think property uh, were playing, you know, off each other very well in that two, or that, I guess, two on five, whatever you want to call it. So they just get brought down kind of one by one. There's no crossfire. No one dies. And at that point, you're trying to rotate over from the B site. There's no chance that you take it. One of them will survive. That's Benji. We'll take a gun into this round, but they're too poor to put anything behind that. Yeah, I mean, so that means flip side tactics is going to have a huge edge going into this round for their their opportunity at tying this game up at five all, which would be so great in what I consider to be the most heaty side of map in the rotation. So to be able to to even it up, you know, this early in the half like this just bodes so well for flip side tactics as well that it will take that out to be yet again the rest just this working that same apartments control just time and time again the same opener from flip side it's what they do in the mid round that that's kind of uh going to be the big indicator here because they always open up this way yeah flip side starting to uh look quite a bit better kind of just got dominated in those first few rounds and on the first rifle they got a little uh, maybe impatient trying to break up towards the top of middle kept getting picked off by ump and then picked off from the other side with one of the rifles and, and things fell apart but since then uh now what four of the last five rounds good for another here right. and probably I mean, the, the, and the only reason why they lost that one round was just kaboom making kind of a crazy play inside of a smoke i mean something you yeah, can't exactly. really account for so for the most part flip side has been able to dominate since they've gotten rifles in their hands oh, they probably shouldn't even have lost that one Kaboom should right. not have found two kills there. Absolutely. So it's been tough on property since the guns have come out is really the point here. Yeah. Turns out those uh those dominant first three or four rounds can really pump you up uh, and make you think one team's going to run away with it. But they're simply that just the first few rounds that are going to be a lot more one sided than uh, any of the others. Once you get into the the meat and the potatoes of the map, that is to say the true rifle rounds. Which property will have one coming up next. They weren't able to save uh, Benji's gun again. Moff had a CZ and Kevlar. He is also down for the count. So boom, could cook you up some meat and potatoes. Oh, that's true. He is in the kitchen. Yeah, there's a sink there, so I hope he washes his hands first. Absolutely. Or Robin was in the other kitchen, so either one could have, could have done it for I could have either. two meals. You have three meals. Aren't there three kitchens in this map? Is there another one? I don't think so. I think so. Like one way deep towards T-side apartments, more towards T-spawn. Wait, that, that is the one we just That's saw. where he was. Yeah, my bad. It's, there's two kitchens. Yeah, so there's two. <laughs> Attacking the po important issues here, me and Helio. Yeah, no, I think that's Inferno's problem. There's just there's too many kitchens. That's not, really not, the not enough issue. cooks. Too many kitchens. There you go. So we we flipped we that thing it. on its head. Indeed, we did. Um, five I think we five. We really got down to uh, to the root of the problem in this map. And there's a kitchen on Mirage, despite there not being a kitchen. Go figure. Just, um, um, just CS things. Flip side again, just opening up with the uh, with roll that up with the top banana. And you can just tell property have not even wanted to challenge banana lately. They've just been playing real passive here on the corner, which is just giving flip side tactics a lot of information to work with. And you're also denying information to property, which means that you can kind of make them move a little bit easier at any given moment as well that it will just walk this op in doesn't spot anything just yet but catches robin benji pushes does get one so an even trade but blades there to fight him off and so now the b bomb site will be opened up by flip side tactics the bomb will make its way in yeah there's maybe a ch uh, i say there's maybe a chance but then i look and there are no kits on any of these guys that was money being very tight for property Three on four retake uh, and really just two, right? Because Berg is lurking around towards middle with that FAMAS. We'll be able to bring down Markalov. 
And Bondic starting to uh, react to this, gets himself up on that plant by two stairs. But the CTs are not looking for another fight. They want to save all of these guns and have a chance in the next. Right, I mean, flip side tactics now have won, you know, the last, what now, six of seven rounds and taking the lead for the first time this game as well. So this is, uh, this is uh, looking really yeah. good for them here on this map. And no longer looking very good for property. That's, that's for sure. To, to be losing now, starting on the CT side here of Inferno. I saw some people in the chat maybe kind of saying since the patch, it, it's changed a little bit. But I would disagree, right? Because Inferno is that one map where you'd actually see some people, even at the top level, switch out their A1Ss for an A4. So I don't know if the seems like the the A4 is the definitely patch is anything yeah. I don't think it has anything to do with this. it. Granted, we haven't seen a whole lot of play on it. Maybe since on the patch. maybe on night one of the patch when people were kind of just freaking out and force switched to the A4. I mean, here's the thing: the real reason why this map is so CT side is how easy it is to control banana with smokes yeah. in, in rotation, and that hasn't changed with the patch. And that was one of the key elements of why this map has been so tough to deal with is. Late late round B hits for terrorists are such a struggle, um, but I mean the big thing is Flipside's never really had to deal with that because they always have a man advantage going into their late round hits for the most part. They just keep getting these opening picks time and time again, uh, just just winning duels. So what you're saying, Dust, is that chat is wrong? Yes, not all of chat. I mean, there's the thousands of people in chat. No, right chat now, is so. a single entity. Uh oh. Here Making we go. Walk a dangerous line here. Yeah, I know. World edit. They've Ooh, been so nice to me. World edit eating grenades over there. He's still looking Would for that pick though. Kitchen? It might have been cooked in the kitchen. Can't cook nades in CS. That is true. You Some can. Wolfenstein action. There, I say it. Call of Duty. Or that that's other why it's game. not in this game. Yeah, that other game, the game that must not be named. So they've taken control of top middle, but this is all just a ruse, right? We can yep. see as observers that the bomb is over towards Banana. Still two people holding on there. And here it goes. Up on top of Oranges is Robin. And oh no, he's not good for any kills here. Kapoom gets one, but that's not Markelov. even in the B site. Markov getting both of those entries and will plant the bomb. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Flipside's been running this pretty much every round, which is like, you know, getting mid-brackets control, getting a couple of guys there, but then doing some type of late B, B hit. But that's mostly been based on the fact that World Edit has been able to get entries over there early in rounds, and so that's why they're just hitting the weaker site, so to speak, but leaving a presence at A to, to hold those people from rotating. This time, they didn't have any initial picks. So they just did a five-on-five -five hit, and Markalov just comes up big on the entries inside that site behind World Edit's op, and now Property just can't really retake here. <laughs> This is getting weird. I don't know if anyone hates that truck more than Berg right now. Oh, but look at Moth. <laughs> I mean, feels good. Shoot people in the back of the head. But we know that none of those really matter. Those are not impact frags. 7 to 5. Flip side leading on the T side. One more round. They'll officially win the half. World Edit will pull out the op as well. And property is pretty broken here. They go for a bit of a force. They'll have somewhat potential. The CT force by on Inferno is actually really scary. They might yeah, even I mean, like have a better chance with this than they have had on the rifle rounds, just because they'll play it uh, a bit more cheesy, I guess. Maybe like push roll that at top or something and be able to trade them out at some point, or just get aggressive inside the apartments and catch someone off. But you see them still playing pretty standard, despite the fact they're just on pistols. They haven't really done anything too crazy, in my opinion. Here, they've just uh, remained default. And so that just means flip side tactics will do the same. I mean, just just keep trying to work this pick at B with world edit. Uh, with the op, play backing him up for support and just trying to work the apartment control. But Marklov does get caught. Bondic trying to trade it out, but oh, and Moth Moth lives. Will... Yeah, he does. He gets out of there. So good opening pick and able to back off. Yeah, that's a really nice first kill. Unfortunately, though, with that CZ, you do get a kill. That's pretty much half of the ammo you had, and he was not able to get that gun picked up. So no gun for him. Property will still have a man advantage. World edit. Okay, I thought maybe he was just going to be the lurker. The bomb is making its way back. Blade wants to be kind of the lurker on the arch side here, as you'll often see when people work in towards right. B, but that was very smoked off, so he's just going to back off. Go in with his team. Robin's in the corner. Can't get a kill with that 5-7. He'll be brought down by World Edit's sidearm. So World Edit with a kill. None of them with an op yet. Here comes that retake. No kit, but the CTs are here very, very quickly, so they will have the time. But even still, 3v4, this is going to be difficult. Kaboom, actually not too bothered by that smoke.
Looks like Berg is already kind of hoping for an exit. Kaboom may be doing the same as he stopped moving. And yeah, I mean, at this point... Already, just... Moth is just saving. He's all the way down at the T-Stairs wagon. Yeah, I mean, he has armor in a CZ to save, so, I mean, that, that's a little bit worth it. Knight doesn't... Or, excuse me, Bird doesn't have any armor here. Kaboom in a position where he might be able to catch an exit at construction, so they're just trying to see if they can't pick up something and fall back, but they're all exiting banana, so they will actually all run here uh, into Moth in just a second here. Dave Cost and World Edit are low, but he won't even peek out until right at the end. Not going to find anything there. So, flip side tactics again, just once they've gotten guns in their hands, it's just been absolutely dominant. Uh, especially World Edit. I mean, he's just getting, getting so many entries. And even Markalov, who for a time, I think like in the first six or seven rounds, he didn't have any kills. Now he's gotten four lately. So, he's been helping open up that B bomb site as well at times, as well as establishing apartments control when they've worked their default. So just all around flip side tactics are playing really well. Now they're getting well, aggressive nice at B and you yeah, have World Edit right on top of it there. So property credit to them for trying to change things up and make an adjustment and try to make something happen, but they they're gonna they're gonna pay for it in a big way. Just World Edit peaking moth right there. Quality uh quality uh crap post material, but still a very nice shot from World Edit. That'll give his team a five versus four and a chance for even more rounds here. They're really starting to add up on this T side for flip side. They've they've also gone towards B so many rounds in a row that, that And here's the here's the other big problem, Joey, is that when we've seen flip side tactics get some big inferno results, like when I've mentioned some of these teams they beat recently, like Dignitas and SK and uh, Mouse Sports, I believe it was, or Pinto, whatever, they've been putting up like ten or eleven rounds on C T side every single yeah. time. So this is uh, this is looking rough for property. All right, Benji with uh, quite a desperation spray down. Does a little bit of damage to quite a few people, but doesn't find any frags. Robin and Darkspot, though, will it be checked? No, it doesn't have to be checked now. Robin will peek out. He was able to bring down Davkos, but World Edit finding another two with the Zop. That nade is going to give away that Benji is coming in through construction. Markalov able to intercept Berg. We've seen a lot of kills catching that one CT rotator up from the sandbags. And, oh my gosh, Markalov through the smoke. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is just uh, this is just kind of piling on here uh, for property. I mean, they've really struggled, and it's just so unfortunate because, like on this map, you have to get something established on the CT side. I feel like if you want a good chance to win, you've got to you've got to at least get nine on CT side. I mean, there, there's no excuse for getting less than that. Basically, uh, you really want ten plus, obviously. Uh, so being limited to possibly just five rounds. That is like well shy of where you need to be. So I mean, I think there's. I normally wouldn't call the game at a five to nine score, but at this point, you gotta think Flipside just takes this map now. Yeah, I would. I would have to agree. I, I wouldn't see. I mean, property can be ridiculous aimers. They're probably capable of getting a couple rounds, finding some openings on T side, but I would definitely expect Flipside, who I already expected to take the series two zero, uh, to be able to hold on after putting up a T side like this. Will the Mag 7s be too much? We can see Benji. Oh my gosh. I, he, yeah, I was about to say, Berg was uh, trigger happy there. He shot Benji in the face <laughs> as he was coming out of boiler. So assisting on that kill. Berg, though, will make up for it. Finds a nice one at a bond. It gets dinked again, maybe through a wall or something. Got a 2 HP. As there are mostly AKs on the other side, so it would have had to have been through something. Blade will bring down Kaboom, and it is Robin and Knight on a separate sides of this A-bomb site and just trying to hold on here in the last round of the half. Oh, if only Berg was there one second earlier. Timing can sometimes be everything, and Markalov is still waiting in Boiler to get the last kill. 10-5. to 5. I mean, it was basically just flip side tactics winning 10 of the last 11 rounds, and really they should have had all 11. It was just like a crazy play from Kaboom hiding inside of a smoke where he got some, some crazy kills that got them that one rifle round but if it wouldn't have been for that you would have just seen flip side tactics can just completely roll through the half like almost perfect even still they only dropped one there so still a very very big t side flip side tactics up 10 to 5 going to the pistol round and the property could hope to win the pistol to kind of extend the, the life of this map a little bit longer but no matter what i feel like just the way flip side tactics have performed on the ct side of this map against in my opinion better competition than property uh, even recently in some of the games we've seen them play against some of the, the better European teams, 
that th this should be no problem at this point flip side to secure this one I would have to agree and after this pistol round I've got a important question for dust oh for no don't worry it's really not that important um oh, okay bondic with the dualies I mean, there's a question. How do you feel about the dualies? Have you had a chance to really mess with them since the slight upgrade to them? I think it's very viable on CT side, especially um, in pistol rounds like this one, uh, or second round if you're saving as a CT you lost first. I think it's very, very viable. I, I mean, I think the 5-7 the is just as viable, I guess. But I don't know. I know they increase armor penetration, but which one actually has the better value between the 5-7 and the dualies? I don't know. They yeah, I'm not sure. Question. I don't know. I still feel like on pistol round for CT, I'd, I'd much rather just have the laser. I mean, I guess the first shot accuracy of the dualies is also pretty good. And now that it will one shot at similar ranges, but still not all ranges, since they increase the right. or decrease the damage fall off, I guess. I mean, Joey, it really just boils down to two guns are better than one. Yeah, that um, has always been true. And that's why the dualies are the best. So, uh, but then you just buffed them. Now they're just OP, in my opinion. Oh, and well, flip side is apparently OP here on this pistol round, getting all of the kills. Markolov with two, Moff. Finds him trying to get that kill. Does, but Davkos is there to take him out of the round. And here's my question. Okay. Uh, it might be a, a silly one, but Moff, his, is Moff's steam icon loaded for you? No. Oh, you have a question mark? I think I have a banana. Okay, I was going to ask. Is, is that a banana or is it corn? We'll have to further investigate this. Because the peel looks more like a banana, but the thing walking yes. looks more like corn. Yeah, I think it's, it's definitely just It's got to be a banana, yeah. but I don't know, man. It's a but, creepy looking banana is what it really is. I've been is. wondering that for way too long. That's a creepy banana. Could be the rise of corn people. Speaking of bananas. I Robin ate one this morning. A banana. Oh. <laughs> All right, I was trying to actually segue back to the game. Oh, right, yeah, Banana in, uh, banana Inferno, I get it. That yeah, was yeah, very yeah. well done. You're a... I'm a wizard with words. You're a wordsmith of our generation. Indeed. You're the Kanye West of casting. Please, no. <laughs> Dust never smiles. <laughs> All right, here we go. Back to... Uh, Where is this cast headed? I don't know. Into the bin, probably. We're going to be sacked after this one. Too many Britishisms in one sentence. I apologize. You've made it pretty far doing this type of thing. I'm new to the European stuff, so... It's true. It is Europe. Blade. Get the max 7 kills. Oh, through the smoke. The Deagle will bring down Blade. Blade wanted to uh, farm up that money. This is a big you know, opportunity here for Proudy. They can close out this round. That'll really help them kind of jump back into the yeah, game well. here despite losing the pistol. So, I mean, this is actually uh, really big news for them. Bondic trying to hold on here with the P9. He's gotten a couple of kills finally getting taken out. But it's going to be Davkos now in a 1v2. He has made it here in relatively good time. I mean, he got here before the bomb even went down. So he's got a good amount of time to play around with. But he's up against, you know, a Mag 7 and a P90 with a good crossfire. So this is going to be tough. Oh, Oh, sorry, bud. And uh, there you have it. So property, that that's a big round to win. I mean, they really needed the pistol, if we're honest, but still decent recovery to get that one. And that gives them a little bit of leeway because they can they force flip side tactics into basically a double save. So they really should be able to still get up to eight now before flip side gets guns. Yeah, and uh, just to comment on the patch a little bit more, I saw some people talking about the M4A1S, the fire rate feeling too slow. Someone asking, it's the same as the AK, isn't it? Yes. It is, it is. the same as the AK. It it's just, not really that bad. It and does here's feel the slower than the AK, but that's probably just because it's not freaking really loud. Well, it's also, like, it's not like spraying that gun was its most effective thing yeah, anyway. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the tapping bullets. is the same, so it, it is fine at ranges still. It suffers a bit close quarter just because... You know, the AK will one-shot the M4 won't. I think, I think my conclusion would just be is like, yeah, I don't necessarily think it was like the so necessary. But at the same time, it's not as bad as everyone's making it out to be. That's, that's kind of how I would lay my conclusion about the patch on the M4. I think the patch was well worth it for all the hitbox stuff. Oh, definitely. Um, to, to, to have that M4 thing happen. Hit, is... hit capsules. We're, we've, uh, this is an N64. We're out. We're done with boxes. We is have that the why they were called hit boxes, by the way? Yeah, they were boxes. Okay. So now they're hit cylinders, right? Capsules. Or hit cones. Capsules. Oh, okay. Sorry. Capsules.
I don't know. Okay. Can add a lot to that word. Capsules. You can make it like five syllables. Anyways, Markalov, that, those are really hard shots to hit. He tries with the deagle through Arch, but the terrorists have got out onto the site. Bondic will peek out and say hello from the apartments. Oh my gosh, and Markalov rolled through library. We'll take down Moth. Are we going to see back-to-back -back rounds of the kind of the underdog into the round, maybe winning it? The bomb has been planted. It will be a hard retake. And while the crossfires they've actually set up are pretty good here, Robin and I believe that's Benji inside of the site. Berg playing in pit. You got that player in pit that pretty much secures this round. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Like, flip side tactics were pretty much forced to a double save situation when they lost that last round. So the fact they've been able to retain a P90 here, as well as keep the Deagle on the world edit, means that even though they're still going to be on a pretty much a save next round, they have a couple of tools to work with. Uh, well, just one now. The bomb explosion sets in. But still, Markalov holding on to that P90 that actually gives... Flip side, something to pose a threat with, whereas before they would have likely really had nothing. Um, so, so that that's good. Uh, that was always around property should win, given the fact that they got that uh, broken by victory there uh, earlier. Uh, so we'll just see if they can keep it up here. A couple of deagles in play. That P90 still out. It's going to be given the Bondic, who was able to get armor. Uh, so Markalov giving it up. I like that Dav cost is on top of the scoreboard with eight kills. He must have planted and or defused. Well, no defuses yet. Must have planted the bomb many, many times for Flipside in the first half as they did have a lot of bomb explosions in a row. Right. It's actually funny how tight their fire distribution is if you just look even between the two teams. With the fact yeah, that Flipside's just been better in their maneuvers and, and where they've gotten those frags at. His property is working into the B-bombs. I hear just Markalov left with that Deagle at Spools. He's doing some damage here to Robin, but... Not finding any kills. Meanwhile, we do see Berg just sweeping through construction and grabbing everything. And that means B is open for business with that bomb. Yeah, so just Bondic was able to get himself that P90. But there you go. Another one. Three in a row now. And that's what happens. You win that pistol. And Flipside did that very convincingly. But they lose the next one. And that, that is almost better for the T side. If I just had the pick of winning pistol as a terrorist or losing pistol and then winning the next one, I would I would pick the, the second option every single time. That way you never really have to deal with the CT4 spy. It's so much easier to get that three in a row. All right, and so now we are into our first full rifle round now. So now we have the op in world at its hands. We have the, the rifles across the board here. Blade's a little bit low with just the FAMAS, uh, so making the sacrifice there to make sure the rest of his fraggers can get those M4s in their hands. And... Flipside Tactics sticking with Tucson's Colts. In fact, it is a majority for them as far as who's using what type of Colt. Uh, so that's actually a little bit different. A lot of teams have just went full A4, so it's cool to see a couple of them in use, but so far not getting anything out of them just yet. As property have just completely steamrolled through this B-bomb site here. They already have a 5 on 2. Well, they're just forced to try to save this op here. Bondic trying to save his M4 as well, but gets traded out. And, I mean, that's, that's a big round to win if you're property. Just to win a decisive rifle round like that on the T side when your round's behind, that, that's a big statement. Shout out to Awian in the chat. Already hunting for that VOD. Trying to make his highlight reel because he went off in that last game. And here's property with another round. Moth, the only one to go down. And four in a row. Maybe this game will be quite a bit closer than we thought. Property so far making quite a stand. And we'll get themselves another right. round here. It should bring it within one unless Flipside gets something done with these pistols. Right. I'm not quite sold on it yet because we've only seen one actual rifle around here from Flipside Tactics. I mean, they got their money busted and were forced to double stay. Now they're saving again after losing the first rifle round. So I want to see a, a few more gun rounds first. But yeah, certainly property have at least done enough to get back into the game. Whereas before they looked like they were about to just get blown out of the water. They've now made it a, a respectable game, so to speak. It, it's now competitive. And uh, we do see a stack over here towards the B side of the map with three players, and they are throwing some nades in it and trying to engage property a bit and hold them off. But, you know, we have a couple of guys making mm. their way up the archway I think to world... do some type of B pinch, maybe? I think World Edit was spotted. Maybe they both were uh, from these property players as they try to grab some information. Although, since World Edit has left, and Dav cost! What? How was that? A... Was he already low from a nade? Did he not have head armor? I have no idea, but this is actually insane that Flipside Tactics on just P250s and such have been able to get the opening three kills of the round, even collect a couple of guns for it. Now Berg, Dutch Cat's Dav cost trying to slip into that corner there at Banana. Here comes the late B hit, but there's two people in the area, and all these pistol kills, Blade with two of them. 
What a job well done. Just when you thought property was creeping back into the game. All right, here you go. Now they're making things happen. Flip side win pretty much a full eco with just some P250s. That is a huge, huge loss to property. Yeah, that was a ridiculous shot. And I see Jonta, the coach. I guess he's answering the question of where Davkost was. That Spindle might not have even spotted that. That was crazy. Davkost with the P250 from Spindle to the wagon at the top of Banana. Uh, Bondic elsewhere with his P250 kill. And at that point in the round, you yeah. know, the seams were starting to unravel for property. So that, that hurts. This should have been within one now. Flip side. That's a big, big boost to the economy on the CT side when oh, you absolutely. win a round like that without buying anything. So they're set now. And it also hurts your. One it's here. also got to hurt your mentality a bit if your property to lose a round like that. Like you've you've won some of the more difficult rounds, and you just give up a, a gimme like that. That's uh that's really not the type of things you want to be doing if you want to make the comeback here. As we do have another rifle and rifle round property to spread out across the map, looking for some picks. You saw Robin trying to get up over the smoke and see if he could spot anything. Not going to be the case, but Berg has gotten the pick. That's the op down on World Edit, and they do have control of brackets mid now. So this is giving property a little bit of something to work with here. Well, there's two in each site for flip side. I think Davkos, like the one man that has an A1S, is in a spot where he sh you should just not play with an A1S. He's playing super close quarters. The barrel's sticking out, and I'm glad to see from the mini map it looks like he has backed off. And right. Robin won't be pressuring him too hard, but looks like they're going to try to wrap. They sent Benji back down at middle to pick up the bomb. And no, they will take it towards A, so they're kind of faking that. They smoked off Moto and then just pushed through that smoke. Bondic, Bondic still will pit. bring Berg, and Blade is working around through the smokes on the jungle side. He'll bring down Kaboom. Kaboom was taking shots, I think, to Bondic, but not able to land any of them. And look at Blade well just done. doing so much work as he comes over from that arch side with the triple kill. Seals the yeah, deal. I mean, that's, the, that's the thing. If you're going to wrap around Moto like that, you still have to deal with that pit player. And if you're not putting any pressure on him from uh, balcony or lane in tandem with your Moto wrap, because everyone else was still actually like towards B, and you're just giving him free reign where he can just take those duels from Pit, and he has so much cover to work with. Meanwhile, you still have Blade to deal with, who's kind of lurking around the smoke and is going to be able to pressure you from either Library or Arch the entire time. So and that's just flip side still having some really key positions to play from, despite the fact that Proctor were able to make it up the Arch with a man advantage. And they catch World Edit again at mid. So some big opening picks from Property, but they've yet to close out a round from this position. We'll see if they can do it this time. They are a man better this time around at a five on three. All right, Bondic in a good spot. Oh, but he goes down without even getting a frag. And that's what happens. Only three CTs left. Property can just move forward with confidence and don't even really have to make trades. They just hit their shots. Here's Davkos with the A1S. Good for one and still staying silent, right? Took him a while to figure out even where that guy was. That is one change, I think, that where the A4 really does suffer. Those those flank I touched out on on our first main match on train like when you get these crazy flanks as a CT now like you are immediately giving away your position when you shoot once. Right. Whereas before there's like that that's that yeah, second like, of time where people are trying to piece it together. Whereas exactly. now it's that's like you can hear a lot of time. Usually it takes a communication like in VoIP like hey I, I died from here and that's how you figure it out. Whereas now you can just hear it and you know. Um, so, I mean, that, I think maybe that's something that people took for granted a lot since they weren't really seeing anyone use the A4 for the longest time in professional play. It was pretty much everyone using silence. So that does creep back in uh, to the equation as we do see again Team Property trying to work themselves into mid. They've gotten a lot of mid picks lately. This time, though, World Edit's able to stay alive and even do a lot of damage there to Berg. But we do see Property gathering up here at B. Only one player inside the site, but that rotation with Markalov is not that far away. As they're definitely going to just plow B now. Here they come. Oh, Davkos somehow escaping without damage. That flash is going to allow him to get one kill. Light up another. Markalov with the spray down. Actually, his fire and then the spray down. So he's good for two. Berg was already very low. He was the first man to take a lot of damage. Mop, though. This guy is... This guy's quite a player. This is some stand-in to bring in. He's had some very nice shots. All right. But a two on three. Post-plant. Not a good scenario to be in right now. Yeah, flip side type is just wrapping two in the construction. A nice Molotov goes down and try to slow them off. And Mop hits a six shot into CT spawn. Even lines up a couple of CTs for some more damage. That nade could finish off Bondic. In fact, no, wow, it doesn't how does quite that do it. I don't know, but now it's just all up to Berg. One versus two. A world that it'll find him. That's the defuse coming in. So good retake there from flip side Titus, But also just some good teamwork there initially from Markalov and Davkos to... 
even though, like you mentioned, how Deathcross was kind of out in the open and almost got caught out, a good flash comes in and also Mark Bob with two kills of his own, uh, you know, to, to always keep flip side a man ahead of property throughout that entire process. So, good round there. I was, I think it was Bondic coming through the back. He had like 29 HP. Right. Right? That nade did yeah. seven damage. It looked like it landed on his face. Yeah, I, I still think that that's something that Nades needs to be suck. visited. They it, well, they're random. Is yeah, they're just what random. The problem is which like sometimes is they are money and they they do they they're just inconsistent, which is really weird. You would think they would just have good values for distance from target and you know the health and armor the target has, and you should be able to figure out a formula where it, it does that key damage. But somehow how it interacts with the environment yeah, it's when it more, bounces it's off more of so things the environment or whatever. Part. Yeah, because in you know back in one point six, you know engine game primitive whatever like boxes or anything didn't even matter right and now look at that boss boots it up but only gets one kill from that position uh as property does make their way to the b bomb site they do get the bomb planted here but they do have a slight health disadvantage as it is an even three on three flip side working in for the retake yeah they've got all good positions i guess berg is uh, i mean berg's in a one kill position so we'll need to definitely find that one kill he's the one separated from the rest of the team uh, where Robin and then Moff do have a pretty solid crossfire between, you know, Oranges and Nubox trying to bait the players into the blender. They're going to have to know that one is Nubox. And they'll work their way around. Berg able to strike. Oh, Berg, no. He's unable to get a kill. Now Robin, Ooh. he's going for the knife. And he, oh, he gets wow. one slice in there. Man, oh, man. But he's unable to slice the bagel. <laughs> I'm just keeping that going. No, I'll just let the he would have had that, right? Made. Like, if he got that second right click in, I think they, they were out of time. Oh, yeah. If you actually would have known the kill the diffuser, then that's probably around victory there for property. Um, that's why you should have <laughs> had a Zeus. It's only $100. Although you have I'm to pretty aim. sure we ban it. Yeah, we actually don't allow the Zeus to be bought. We're thinking about... And that's on, good. I actually no. prefer it that way, but we were thinking yes. about letting it in. No. Please, please, I hope we don't. But I think I, I even think if he had one, you'd still go for a knife in that position just because you, you find know, you're in a smoke way. and it's so much easier to find them, yeah. Right, and this game, this map could be over at least here pretty soon as property don't have much to work with this round. Uh, they're already a man down as well. Here's we have seen Bondic be able to find the opening pick as property pretty spread out. A couple towards banana, a couple towards mid. Just trying to, to work something out here, find a frag. I think Robin did spot a player, rotate off the site to CT spawn, but he can't find the target here so not good already oh, okay there it is there it is there's the good robin will find a kill to even it up four on four that will actually still favor the terrorist as they work into b they have spotted davkos they know exactly where he is they line up together and they bring him down no chance for davkos and a good chance here for property to keep this game going flip side of course only need one more round and will once again be faced with a retake situation on the b site yeah, and I mean, well, that's just inside the smoke, waiting for his team to get in positions. They're just going to try to get this, but oh, what stray beagle bullet. Going to catch all that in the face. That's unfortunate. Now it's just Blade and Bondic, and Blade's already starting to back off with this M4, just trying to save it. So the round will be conceded here. Property will take it, but they need to win four more in a row after this to force an overtime in this one. And uh, the way this half has played out so far, we've never seen them really, sh since the rifles have come out, uh, we haven't really seen them be able to streak any rounds together just yet. Uh, Flipside Tactics has always had a response immediately after a victory from property. So money is tight this time around for Flipside, so we should at least see property get one more here. Well, we thought they would have had a, a round in a similar situation like this right. too, right? But Davcost with the P250, maybe that'll be the uh, the difference maker, the fact that Davcost only has a USP, but still four P250s and even a... Smoking some flashes, some utility there on Blade. Who will actually be playing top middle. Berg's about to pop flash his way through this smoke. And he will do that, and very awkward at the top of mid, but Berg will come out on top. Right, so uh, we'll see how this continues to play out here. The property should be able to close this one out. There's a huge stat going on at B, but the bomb's not going to be over here. Uh, so they will get that plan at the A-bomb site. They've already cleared out the A-bomb site. Now, at this point, <laughs> with the information, Robin should just know they're just hunting for frags at this point. So should Benji. They know what's up. They know no one's A. Flip side and probably like, back oh, off. yes, they're coming. They're coming to the to the B site. We're going to win with this stack. And then to find out it's a fake and the bomb has been planted. Right. 
And now, at this point, Property is trying to hold Flipside off of grabbing any of these AKs. That's why they just keep taking these battles. They just don't want them to save anything else here. Markalov, though, maybe they does will. get one. Badge is going to go down, too. Here's Berg coming around. It looks like he'll be the one to uh, make sure that no one saves. And yeah, he'll find the double kill at the end. Both of those assisted on by his teammates. And Berg right. will get that triple kill. He did find the opener, also. Very awkward encounter with Blade at the top of middle. But here we go. Another rifle round, and... Um, well, maybe not, actually. It would be a bit awkward with Davkos and Bondic being cheap. I think they might elect to just even out the money and, and save again. And I, I do kind of agree with this call. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you, you have the cushion to work with here, and you're on the CT side of Inferno. And you've been winning most of the rifle rounds. So I'm sure they just want to get to a real comfortable position. That, and they, they know they didn't do enough damage to property to force them into a weaker buy. Uh, they know that property still has full guns here, so it's not, yeah, you're right, it's not even worth it. They do even out the money a bit, as you noted. We do have a Nova uh, on to World Edit here, just playing up close on a smoke, trying to catch someone off guard. Bondit getting aggressive here uh, with the P250. So, I mean, they're, they're giving themselves a couple little things to work with, but, yeah, definitely just being really conservative. I see Markalov on top of Oranges again. If it works out for him this time, trying to play those cheeky spots. Kaboom just waiting on a mid push over here towards bench. So far, no one's gone down. Burke has taken quite a bit of damage, though. If this B stack happens to work out, you know, the bomb is not with them, but they are still looking for information. They'll have to poke their heads out a little bit. If World Edit happens to take one of those heads off here with a Nova, things could get dicey. Dafcon, though, will fall to Robin. Markov having this boost spot with the CZ could come up big, but Robin checks it. But we're all that still up close with the oh. Nova. Gonna find one. Such Falling a, back, such though. Such a manly I mean, sounding weapon. It is. And now they're going to fall back to A, but Bondic is going to be in boiler, so maybe he can catch someone off guard here. Let's one buy. Smart move. Well, he Let's think them to all let them all by. buy. He lets a few buy here. Benji will actually <laughs> check it, but goes down. AK collected for Bondic now. That and then look good. at this. There's two AKs picked up from Blade and Bondic, but Blade just went down. So now it's just Bondic and World Edit. But World Edit is coasting up, but the Nova gets caught as well. So it's all up to Bondic. Could he really clutch this? Is this a thing? I mean, a player is in pit. You'd think Kaboom surely can't lose this battle. And yeah, he won't. All right. Looking for fireworks, but they were a dud. That's uh, yeah, flip side tactics. Yeah, it could be. But now they're on a full rifle round. Now they have rolled edit back with the op. But if we're honest, when the CT side with the op rolled edit, it's kind of struggled. He's been getting caught off when he's tried to be aggressive mid. He hasn't really been able to be a factor rotating with the op B either. So this is where you really need him to step up just to finish this game off. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I mean, he's played well throughout the game. Everyone really has for flip side. But now they just need one last effort uh, to, to close out this game. They will put him B this time with the op. So they're changing things up. He'll go aggressive. He doesn't find the pick, but he's still up. Still holding the corner. Yeah, I, I thought he was just going to take that first shot and then fall back. I almost would have rather seen him do that. It can be kind of hard to hold that position at the corner because you can get peeked. You know, they can either just run up and peek you, or they could jump up on the logs and peek. And that one's generally the more deadly when you have something like an op. And Moff will even find the opening kill onto Blade. Oh. And there's Benji just peeking with a pre-fire onto World Ended, who had slid himself over smoke. to the car. Davkost will drop a smoke, but it might be too late. Players are already coming in. Molotov is there. That one just in the nick of time. And he'll retreat back into a Molotov from property. Yeah. So he'll go down one for one there. Property with the man advantage. Markalov is still lurking through the garden, though. Yeah, so much chaos happening at B-World that just getting caught trying to get out of car, you know, rotating with the smoke in his hand and getting busted for it. We've had a crazy exchange of incendiaries and Molotovs that take place as well, but now we're into a two versus two, but Bondic just works up, not expecting him to be there in the corner, so Markaloff now left in a one versus two, does spot the opera up and in, but has no clue where this second guy is. He's looking for him oh. in the corner, which leaves Benji open for the free frag, and it's 14 to 15. We could, could be seeing the overtime here. We could. And uh, honorary mention to someone in the chat, Dusta, who made a prediction before, you know, right on the veto screen saying what the map friends were going to be. He said 1613 here on Inferno in favor of Flipside. And I mean, he was really close. And yeah, that was. Uh, Unless that it goes to OT, it. and then he might not be for that, all that close. But Flipside do have a chance here. A little uh, underfunded and not so much utility, but they do have that smoke. Or those smokes, I should say. All five. And, I mean, Property have really stepped up here on the T side. I mean, we thought that this game was going to be over when we saw the first half, and we saw that Flipside were able to get 10 rounds on the Terra side in the first half in such a dominant fashion. 
And flip side tactics, though, have, have suffered almost the same fate. They've been dropping rounds. They know all that's inside the closet. Just waiting for him to cross back out. He's just trapped in here. He needs someone to bail him out. It could be Blade. Well, it just gets out, though, as that, that uh, Molotov comes in. So that's well done to get out of that situation. There's a, there's a good closet joke to make there, I'm sure. I think it's best that we maybe don't leave R. Kelly in there. And just, <laughs> yeah, uh, just walk we away. don't want to put World Edit in a closet with R. Kelly. Who knows what would happen? I, I know what five. would happen. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, we'll just stop there. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Berg will find the first kill. Onto World Edit, and the second year onto Blade. Oh my gosh, oh, no, are the OT bells a ring in? I think they might be. They could be. There's going to be a late B hit, though, and they're still two in position, so they kind of guessed wrong here, thinking they had forced their rotation B out. And Dalkos is just hiding ever so patiently to step out right at the right moment to get the bomb down, and he does do so, but still, everyone else is crumbling, leaving Markalov alone, and he'll go down if property has done it. They have won 10 rounds on T-side themselves to match flip side and force an overtime here. I would say that I, even though it was obviously even, that's why we're going to overtime, I did feel like flip side played CT a bit better. Like The rounds that they won were actually on rifle rounds, whereas most of the CT rounds that property won were more towards yeah, that's like true. eco rounds and pistol rounds. So Although flip side I, did get that one just full on eco versus rifles. Too. Right. So I, I still think that even though it's even flip sides wins on CT look a bit more convincing to me. So I, I still favor them in overtime. But still, what an accomplishment from property to be able to, to have a 5 to 10 half from their CT and then still find a way to put this in overtime. That, that's certainly a great accomplishment. Yeah, with the stand-in as well, right? I mean, Moff on the scoreboard at the bottom, 15 and 18, might look, oh, no big deal. But this man has had some really important frags in this game. He's been playing well. And that kill distribution, uh, while it was very even, I think, kind of coming out of the first half, it has definitely split up a little bit now. I can see Bondic with 23 frags, just the 14 on Blade and Dav cost. Berg now for property out with 26. One of those games where Berg is going off, so I don't think it's too much of a coincidence that uh, Berg doing extremely well and property able to take flip side into OT. And you can see Benji and Moff with the 15 frags, so a bit of a, what is that, a difference of 11 kills over on the uh, T side? To just right. the nine on CT. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's been a tight race on the scoreboard, but just just thinking about how the rounds went, I just feel like flip side. Uh, we're, we're, we're a stronger team. I think, like, like you've noted, though, the frag distribution there on property is so much tighter. Like really, everyone playing so well on that team. Whereas you can see Bondic and World Edit, you know, pretty out ahead uh, of the rest of the team. So. Uh, just not maybe quite getting as much out there full lineup combined as, as property has. But I think a lot of that was just property getting some, some big plays on the T side because they were all getting destroyed on CT. So really, you know, they, they all just kind of stepped up there on the terrace. So when you look yeah. at some of the numbers here. And I know I spoke with uh, Frost a little bit on Skype about, you know, kind of the dev cost. I think it's the flip side owner. Also helps manage the team along with uh, Dana, right. or maybe Dana. I don't know how to, try to pronounce. I'll go with Dana. That Dana. seems to make yeah, more yeah, sense. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. That they are kind of worried about those those B holds. You know, looking for a, a team, a new teammate that can really help lock down that B site. And I mean, considering the amount of rounds that property were able to get into the B site, like how many times Flo side had to go I mean, in and retake. You can see that here, B was the, the weakness. I mean, for both yeah. teams. Every single player on property got more kills on T side than C T. Like they all outfragged themselves, like basically just getting the majority of their numbers there. And everyone on property were pretty much in the high like mid to high double digits on Terra side, except for a couple of players. So they really did just step it up. Uh, and and as you noted, a lot of it there was just being able to attack that B bomb site. All right, well, they also caught off world edit a lot at mid, if we're honest yeah. as well. Even at Banana, he he had gone down mm -hmm. a couple rounds without getting a pick. Yeah, and he it's... he went six and eleven on CT side there, so he definitely didn't have the type of half you'd expect with so, that op. Uh, it's maybe worth looking a little bit at Markalov and Davkos and seeing how well they can do over towards the B site to hold it. You'll see World Edit sometimes slide over early on, but Damn. look at Berg. What are you gonna do when he kills you at mid? Comes up full blind, also kills World Edit. A round had already fallen apart, but to add insult to injury, Moff also hits his op frag. 
And this is kind of funny those... for a property. They don't generally have a primary opera, but they bring in the stand-in, and Moff with the op has been pretty good. Yeah, I mean, the, it's it's just so crazy to see where all that it just keep getting caught on that arch side. I mean, that's a corner that he's holding with an op that you expect him to be able to, to get something from. A lot of operas use that to, to, to be able to hold brackets and get some nice frags, but he's just continuously getting caught out and not able to even get a frag. Like, he's just not even trading. He's just dying for free in many situations. That's just so uncharacteristic of him. Yeah, World Edit is generally a monster no matter what's going on. I still see Bondic living up to his uh, recent glory here with 23 oh, yeah. and 17. Also, is that his? I want to check. Is that actually... Oh, why is my camera in the abyss? I wanted to check if that was actually Bondix. Who's dropping all these A1Ss is, is what I want to get to the mystery. It has been Bondic that was kind of one of I the think, two guys on flip side. Yeah, that I think Davkos might be using it as well. Possibly, yeah. Let's see. Hopefully we don't miss any kills at Banana. I see Terrace moving up, but I wanted to see, to see Bondic pull out a grenade. Whatever. We'll figure it out later. Back to Kevin Cam. As Berg, once again, looking for the openings. Always getting shot in the back. He sees his blood on the wall, knows there's a man over towards Arch, so he'll have to give up the kill, uh, as he did have a player pinched in Porch. Even still, he's able to throw a smoke out. Markalov peeking out into three. Oh, Robin man. is also... Actually, no, Davkos, I should say, was one also there, so B will fall in a very aggressive play from both of those guys, and I don't really I don't really see the reason they even have for a that aggression. I think they did. I just don't think it was very effective. Oh. That, and that's probably the key difference. I think We've they threw it on the roof to flash car, but everyone was already so close that it didn't blind any of the Saris. Gotcha. And we've seen time and time again how effective a pop flash Pete can be on Banana, but that one just didn't really hit its mark. And so you see, you know, property getting a two for one trade at Banana. And that's pretty much the round. Came down to just that one little interaction at the corner of Banana where Team Property were able to get the better end of the deal. And, and now they're going to be up two rounds from T-Son on Inferno and OT. These guys got to stay alive. Like, this is a massive kill. This, if, if neither of these guys save their weapons, Property probably get all three rounds. Yeah, I think you're you're spot on there, and that would be devastating. Um, I mean, we, we, we know how this map usually plays out, and obviously regulation this game didn't play out the way you'd expect, you know, in consideration of the side biases that are usually presented on Inferno. Uh, but here in OT, like, you, you really feel the pressure to get your, your appropriate CT rounds, and it seems like flipside tactics are, are not going to have that happen for him. Yeah, although it can be more CT sided just because it's, it is slightly easier to get the rounds on CT side, and it is pretty hard to get into the bomb sites and actually plant. So it can just be a battle of, you know, it's CT sided because the CT economy is always going to be so much better. But here in overtime, when everyone starts with 10 grand, you just have these full rifle rounds for the first two. I, I would say that almost gives, I don't know, it's like, it's really tough to say because then the, the CTs also have their full nades to buy all that time. But then, yeah. you know, the Ts also have their weaponry and their nades. I don't know when it comes down to the money. I'd have to just run... Run the I numbers think CT on a whole lot of data. are always at more risk on overtime than terrorist are. Uh, yeah, well, your money can sure. collapse faster, that's exactly. for sure. So that, that is like the one big risk factor, it, you know, in, 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 on any map even. It doesn't matter what the map is. That's just something that CTs always have to worry about there in overtime. That's why you have to be so mindful of it. And, and flip side tactics, of course, got the short end of the stick in that regard here. They're just, you know, stuck on one M4 and a couple of pistols and a Mag 7. But they have won a couple of crazy, you know, that's true. rounds like this in regulation. So... I don't want to count them out just yet, but the way property have looked just in like the last few rounds of regulation and and how they've looked here in this OT, uh, they they look to take to steal this map away from Flipside. Well, here we go. We see now the nades being used uh, to defend that B bomb site. Not the case last time where they tried to flash and push out aggressively with still like a minute on the clock. That almost made no sense to me. Robin moving in will be taken down by Markolov. Yeah, but they've, they've you know, yeah, faked fake. everyone out here. But Bondic holding his own. Oh, he... the pit lines up a couple, but only gets one. But still, does a lot of damage. And Blade, oh, Blade. they win this round. And that was sick. I think that, that A hit came a bit too late. Like, Flipside had already rotated a second player Blade inside the site with that Max 7 from Banana. And, of course, Bondic, you know, stood his ground the entire time. Uh, and so Flipside do, in fact, get that round. They, like, the one M4 that they had, Flipside played into it and, and lost a couple of members to it even in the late round. So that, that's a that's a big victory for Flipside. That kind of keeps them in the game. If they would have dropped that round, too, I mean, you think Property just takes it at that point. Yeah, I, I would have definitely thought that. Although I will say I never thought that I would be thinking that. 
If that doesn't yeah, I just never perplex thought we'd everybody. Far. Yeah, ne never thought we'd have made it this far. I really thought that uh, we were going to see the you know flip side taking this one no problem, but it it's been all but the case. And they will be back on the T side, which, I mean, has been the favored side here. And even in overtime, that held true with Terrace getting two. The CT is getting one. Will it be flip side to find all three and get up to that magic 19 scoreline? That's what you need to win in OT1. Maybe we'll even see the split 2-1 again and head into a double OT here on Inferno. The ops will come out. Berg actually picking up the op. Interesting. And uh, World did it with his, but he's been uh, a little hot and cold in today's match. Let's see how this thing plays out here as a uh, be hot side. this round. Yeah, I mean, World Edit was really key in regulation on getting some of those opening picks on the B side of the map. Despite the fact that he looked kind of poor on CT side, he really has been a big influence on that side of the map on T side. And he opens up again here in the first round of OT with that pick on to Berg. And this side just goes into their default, not pulling out anything different or special well, here in overtime. In, perhaps in danger, right? If he worked into the window room before it's been cleared, or Bonnick going to try to clear it himself. Oh, and he will get the frag. Bonnick, though, very low from it, down to 9 HP. But already two members of property have been eliminated from the battlefield. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and this has just been something Flipside was doing time and time again on their T side. They were so dominant in gun rounds, getting those picks at B, being able to work the department's control. And it's starting out that way again, but Kaboom, he does have that op holding the corner, is able to take down World Edit. Uh, but Flipside are, are still knocking on the door of this B bomb side, at least for now. They do have enough time to shift back to A if they so choose, but B is in fact the site that's going to be easier to take with just one member left over there at Spools. It's going to be Kaboom and his op. Sounds like the name of a Counter-Strike uh, children's book. Kaboom and his op. No, that just me? Very true. No, I, I, I agree. Get it now at your local library. They gotta get move quick though here. They're running out of time. They might not even get this bomb plane. They might just lose off the clock, especially if Robin can come in here and disrupt yeah, this. But no, Dave plan. Cost saves him. Good job. And that just leaves Kaboom with his op, which he's probably... I would think he would just save it, but... He's looking for some type of kill here first. Yeah, probably just trying to hunt. A lot of times people will be already posted up behind that box, and it's it's a much harder... I mean, I guess the op just always takes the advantage here because it is pretty hard to see that far into the library if you've got an AK or something. So Kaboom is hoping for maybe a free frag and to run away. Might even get it here. Oh, seeing those little, those little silly hats of the terrorists. I don't even know what those are called, but they're silly looking, and Kaboom with a nice shot onto Markalov will take him down. Yeah, so I mean, he forces, I guess, one rebuy there. Oh, and, and also, two. Yeah, I mean, he forces some a couple of rebuys there on top of the ones that Flitz had already had to make due to you know the numbers they lost in the actual taking of the bomb site. But still, Flitz side tactics, true to regulation. Just constantly are they getting these picks up on the B side of the map early in rounds, and then just on top of being able to maintain apartments control and in the process of getting an opening pick like that at B. It just gives you so many options. Uh, it gives you so much room to work with, and uh, Flipside Tactics uses it to, to even things back up. Now at 17 all, can they have the perfect T side that Property could not, as we did see Property lose that really key, uh, basically like anti-force buy uh, to, to even give Flipside Tactics a, a window uh, to, to, to crawl through to get, to get back into this thing? Can Flipside Tactics deal with that situation better if they can win this round? That's the question. That is the question, and we will get our answers soon enough. A minute left in this round. Markalov and Bondic working on clearing out those apartments. Dav cost Blade World Edit holding out towards middle. And one of those guys that would be a World Edit actually still watching Banana with that op a little bit. Seems like they are poised for an A take. Might even, I mean, we haven't really seen a set A take with all the smokes, you know, coming down towards Art Side Moto, uh, smoking off the pit as well. And Moff and a. Uh, Good spot, but he'll be flashed out and pushed away. Benji will flash and try to buy some time. He'll have to fall off of Arch. And all of the terrorists, man, they are here. They've actually dropped the bomb. They're going to go forward, still not showing the bomb, trying to think maybe this is a fake. We've got people in Banana still. So the rotations have not been pulled over yet. And here goes the bomb. It's been picked up. It's going up the porch side. Bondic and Berg both finding kills for their teams. Berg in the pit. He's going to go down, taken out by Markalov. Benji has worked his way over to Arch side. And it's a three-on-three -three retake situation here for the CTs. 
Kaboom under the porch already, but Markov. Oh my gosh, that grenade! That hurts. Kaboom that hurts just got wrecked. Yeah, but we'll see if property can still try to close in here. They're, they're still trying to work themselves through the smoke in. But oh, they do get inside the site, but Davkos hits a key headshot there. Two key headshots from him. He just closes out the round while he's just stuck in a corner. That's insane how you made that don't, work. Don't put Davkos in a corner. Yeah, I guess not. But he also had some nice distractions kind of come in. So people had to deal with some of the other players on his team that were holding some angles. And it, it freed him up a little bit despite the fact he was kind of uh, trapped in the back there. And there you have it, flip side at 18 to 17. Now, we saw a similar situation last half where Property kind of had Flipside up against the ropes, had them on a force buy in the last round of the half. Flipside have the same opportunity. Can they do better? Can they actually win this situation? Benji. I love how much the shotguns have been uh, making an appearance here. And World Edit. Oh, wow. That would have been beautiful. He just got one, got the other, but even... Perhaps prettier were those CZ shots. Oh, Bondic eats a lot yeah, too there. Berg is just doing an unreal amount of damage here with the CZ. And I'll even have time to reload it to at least get a full mag. 17 bullets left. And look at the information Kaboom had. Oh, they were thinking of boosting up. and then, I mean, Blade getting a bit lucky there. Spraying through the smoke will just connect onto the moth. Kaboom has to be careful now. I mean, his team's a man down. He's really aggressive on Manana. Yes, he's getting a lot of information once let's... Berg and Robin kind of comfortably to stay inside the A-bomb site because they know no one's made any movement towards B, but if he were to fall, I mean, that would be so massive. Yeah, and you can see how, how careful Flipside want to play this. Kaboom in a good spot. Oh, oh Blade. but Blade with the aim. Markov to bring down Berg, and it looks like the hopes of property might just be dashed here in the last round of overtime. Number one, or as Valve would tell you, OT0. Still bothers me to this day. Here comes Robin with the Mag 7, the Heaven Guard, trying to work his way in. He'll certainly need uh, another pair of Angel Wings beside him if he wants to pull this off. And there it goes. Markolov will take him. 1917 is your square flip side. Finally managing to win their map pick here of Inferno. Yeah, I mean, so the result is what we expected, but it certainly wasn't... Uh, the, the way it happened certainly wasn't expected. I mean, we thought flip side tactics were before the map even started. We felt like they should be able to take it no problem. When we saw the first half play out where they went up 10 to 5, we definitely thought that it was going to be uh, an easy victory. But I mean, property fought back in their own right on the T side. Uh, but we, we talked about how flip side tactics, when they were winning rounds on T side, those were more uh, rifle round based. Whereas. Uh, when it was uh, property winning rounds, it was more like pistol yeah, they rounds. Yeah, got that pistol round the first based. rifle. Right, so it seemed like flip size T side rounds. Despite it being an equal number of 10, they seem a bit more convincing because of the situations that they took place in. And then we go into overtime and flip side tactics able to have the, the perfect 3 0 on the terrorist side to close out the map, win at 19 17. But now we move on to overpass. This is Property's pick, but we also kind of discussed how we didn't really feel like they gained much of an edge picking this map. No, not at all. Uh, in fact, I think they lost an edge. They've dolled an edge, if anything. Yeah. Having to pick Overpass, a map that they've already lost twice on, have banned three times. It was one of their most banned maps, and now they were forced to pick it and start on the T side? Like, that doesn't bode very well. Yeah, I mean, the, the only saving grace is the fact that it seems like flip side tactics haven't necessarily played this map a whole, whole lot in their own right. Uh, in recent times, uh, when you think about it. And that last one so, was just so close, too. Right. I mean, they, they did beat SK, I guess, like earlier on this month on Overpass. But then besides that, it's been like a month since they really played Overpass. Uh, and they've even had a couple of losses on it recently.